Well, hello there. My name is Jay with Server Matter and with CompuMatter. And the purpose of this video is to show you how to use Duplicati in a script file, a bash script, to back up your server or your, in my case, it's a Linux machine, uh, from your server to Backblaze. Um, you know, previously used, I used our clone, and though I, it did a good job, it was much more cumbersome, especially when it came to restoring those files because our clone really doesn't supply an effective GUI at this time. So I, I moved in the direction of Duplicati and so far so good. Let me introduce you to what it does. Okay, so here's the, the uh, bash script that we're running. You'll see I've created a bunch of variables at the beginning. Um, one of the things we do is keep track of time, when the backup started, when the backup ended, so you can look at that and see if that makes sense. Should it have taken a lot longer, you know something's wrong. Uh, we make the, the log directory. You're going to want to fill in your own names uh, where these variables are. The uh, log file level profiling is, the, is like the debug uh, or VVV on verbose. It's going to give you the most information. You're going to want to reduce that to warning or something else as time goes on. And here are some uh, commands that I've learned about as I've gone through the uh, Backblaze documentation. You can learn these on your own, set them to something else as you see fit. Um, as we move down, we see the passphrase. That is the Duplicati encryption key. So you can't lose that. If you do, you'll never be able to restore what you backed up. So if you're going to encrypt, pull it from wherever you're going to pull it, put it in here. Um, your Backblaze account ID, uh, for us that would be the group ID, so you, we don't use the master, we create an application key specific to uh, each one of our client's buckets, and the same thing with the API, corresponding API key, that's what's in here. And auto cleanup and uh, debug output we're not worried about for now, or actually auto cleanup, yes, we figured that sounds like a good idea, debug output, um, Evidently, that's a higher level of output. We've just left that at false for now. <laughs> okay, so here we begin the backup. We sleep for a second because sometimes we find duplicate gets into the log before uh, our beginning. So we sleep for a second for that reason. And this here, we rebuild missing D block files with duplicate repair. We have found that if for any reason a previous backup failed with Duplicati, whether we've control C out of it or something else, it corrupts the synchronous expectations of what's in the, the uh, SQLite backup uh, database of um, Duplicati and what it discovers is actually at the Backblaze destination. If they don't jive, it just fails the backup. It doesn't give you a report after saying we backed up these but not these. It just stops it right there. So we want we go ahead up front and do a quick repair, make sure we get all that in order. We also found that in some cases there were files that the repair could not fix. Uh, and that would also stop the train. And it would it would recommend to you that you purge any broken files from the destination. So again, why not just do this up front? We run the repair, we run the, the purge. These things will 99% of the time never play a role. They, they go by instantly, but if it does play a role, you're gonna to wanna to make sure they're done. Okay, the next thing we have is, okay, th th this echoes what we're doing to the log file, so you have an idea the actual command is below that. And here we begin the actual backup. And here we have B2, you see our backblaze bucket name, which is one of the variables. Up, oh, oh, actually, it's not showed in this file. Our backblaze bucket name is actually pulling from an Ansible uh, script, so that's okay. You need to put in your bucket name there uh, or put it in a variable up above. All these other variables are, in fact, in the file that you see up here, and they're all appended. And here we perform the actual backup. Now, when that's done, we have created uh, a mail alert script which will hopefully capture the correct exit code and send two different versions of it. A indicating it's a success, F indicating it's a failure, along with the script, the body, and so on, and off it goes. I'm not going to get into the mail script on, uh, on this video, but that is uh, how we handle 
emailing from the server because we want to know when this backup has completed so we can kind of verify things and over time maybe refine this so we really know if it does fail. We have had an instance where we control seed the backup um, and this script sent us a success. So exit code was evidently zero despite the fact that I control seed sent us a success. Well, it's not really what I have in mind so that needs a little more refining but the script itself works perfectly. Now, just to kind of give you an idea, this is an actual log file right here. And you can see right away it starts off with rebuilding missing dblock files and then purging any broken files. There are no logs resulting from them, so presumably both of those went well. The beginning of the actual backup, and then it keeps track of everything that's happened during the course of that backup right up until the end where it says external backup results, results emailed to, and it sends us what we had in the other area. I do see occasional failures in here um, about hashed, uh, I think that's what it says, is there's a hash mismatch or something like that. So you'll have to give some research into, you know, why a couple of those things failed along the way. But all in all, we found that things worked. Um, this is the actual bucket that we just used to back those files up. You can see the date is 4.4. The date of my computer is 4.4. So that's real time and it did complete. It didn't throw any errors at the end or anything along those lines. So now let's say it's six months later, you need to restore something that was in that backup. Uh, for that, you're going to use the GUI. I use the command line to create the backup. It's important to note that the command line is completely divorced from the GUI of Duplicati. They don't, they don't play together for some reason. You would think if I created a backup using the CLI, it would show up in here as a backup, but it doesn't. Uh, and so maybe, you know, the C, you, can you could create that very same backup in the GUI, but I wanted something that ran from a cron job and ran on a daily basis um, and I wanted to, I didn't want the customer who I might provide login to this environment. I didn't want the customer to get access to the backup foundation for fear that they might screw it up. They might, what if they wrote over the encryption key, uh, by mistake and saved it? Well, from that point forward, they wouldn't be able to restore their own files. So there's, there's problems that can come up here. So we're doing one from the command line, but we're allowing them to restore from this environment. So. This is how you'll do it. Restore, click direct restore from backup files, click next, and you'll need to choose the location. By default, it points to this server's, is that this server's? Yeah, it looks like it's pointing to this server's uh, local environment, the server that it's, that it's currently on, uh, local folder or drive. We don't want to do that. Uh, we want to choose B2 Cloud Storage because that's the Backblaze environment that these files are actually sitting on. We'll plug in the bucket name. Uh, in our case, we're always using the root folder. We're not creating subfolders within the bucket. And we're going to fill in our application key and our application ID. The key, of course, is always hidden. They only give it to you one time, so you gotta make sure when you create that bucket on Backblaze the very first time that your key ends up in a place where you can find it when you need it. Um, it does require these three bits of information. I've tested it without the bucket name and it won't work. We'll click Test Connection. Connection works. So now we can click Next so we can take a look at what our files are. Oops the uh, passphrase. So in this case, we used encryption on our initial backup. We wanted Duplicati to encrypt these files before they ever left our computer and were flying over the internet for, for whoever wants to, to look in on it. So it's important, again, that you saved that passphrase that you used for Duplicati when you created the initial backup. We'll enter in what we believe is the passphrase and click connect. Uh, and that worked. It would fail you right away if you didn't have the right passphrase. We've experienced that. All right, so now we've got a list of all the files that it sees that it has backed up. So let's pick something. I'm going to go to the working directory. 
and this HDD temp that I have backed up. And now we're going to, on the same server, this is that file right here, we're going to remove that file. And then we're going to back it up. We're going to restore it. Original location, overwrite. Everything else will just leave the same. And excuse the noise in this office. I've got a server sitting over my shoulder that I'm actually building for a client and using this as part of the demonstration. Anyway, that is the process. There is the file. I'm going to go ahead and run that just to see if it uh, is a normal file. That looked good. Although I think that program's already installed anyway. Yeah, so no errors there. It looks like a working dev file. So anyway, that's it. Um, that's how we've solved getting uh, using Duplicati to back up files to Backblaze and to be able to restore them whenever we need to after the fact. Uh, has the, the intended bonus of keeping the backup itself out of the client's eyes. We know it's done in the background. We'll get an email indicating it's been done. We can check on those things. They can get access to their files when they need to without it becoming a bunch of brain damage. If you'd like to be first in line for these kinds of videos when they come out, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And uh, if you're so inclined, hit the like button. Thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye.